Praise the Lord. We're here today again in the upper room of our house church. My wife and I, and I am preaching to you from the Holy Bible. God commanded me to preach back in January of 2015, and I've been preaching ever since. And I'm preaching to you today if you're watching this. And to my faithful wife who is in the upper room of our house church. And we are preaching today. I am preaching today from John. John chapter 4, verse 36. John 4, 36. John chapter 4, verse 36. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. One soweth and another reapeth, that he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. It's a true saying. Jesus Christ is the Lord of the harvest. Jesus Christ says to send forth, pray, to pray that the Lord send forth laborers into his harvest. For the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. Now we see today on YouTube and other, other social media that the laborers are many. No, no, this is not the harvest. This is not the labor that Jesus Christ is speaking of here. The harvest is plunges, but the laborers are few. The labor is in the street, face to face, person to person, not over a television screen. No. Our ministry is on a television screen, but our ministry is in the streets. Our ministry is in the streets. It's offered here as a, as a free service, as a witness, but the actual ministry is in the streets, and the actual ministry is in my house church. This is the ministry, but by the blessing of modern technology, we're able to stream it or to, to record it and send it out onto the television screen, but that's not the ministry. Whether that camera has batteries in it, or whether the camera goes with us, or whether the YouTube... A lot of people are going to be disappointed one day when YouTube is, is failed, or out of business, or doesn't work anymore, or won't let them upload their videos. Censorship, or whatever it's going to be in the future. The laborers are many on YouTube. So we know that this is not the ministry Jesus was talking about. The laborers are few, Jesus talks about. Pray, therefore, the Lord of His harvest, that He sends forth laborers into His harvest. For the fields are white with harvest. The harvest is outside. The harvest has always been outside. Under the sun, under the sky, with the rain and the wind. The harvest is always outside. In the street, in the highways, in the hedges. Face to face, man to man, woman to woman. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. He that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. One soweth and another reapeth. Let's turn. But many today, let's turn to Luke. Luke chapter 17. Luke 17, verse 19. I'm sorry, Luke 19, verse 20, I believe. Let me find it here. Luke chapter 19, verse 20. Luke 19, verse 20. Luke 19, 20. Jesus is giving the parable of the pounds. Luke 19, 20. Another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound. Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee, because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. And he saith unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. He said, Oh, here is thy pound, Lord. I have laid it in a napkin because I feared thee. He feared 
the Lord. Now we know that in this parable, Jesus is speaking about the Lord being a man. Of course, it's a type of himself, but the fear of the man is why, not the fear of the Lord, but the fear of the man. The fear of the man in the parable was the reason why that servant did not go with his pound. That servant did not go with that gift, that down payment, that earnest that his Lord left him, that pound, because he feared man. He feared man. I feared thee, he says. Thou art an austere man. He feared the man, so he did not go. Therefore the Lord saith to him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Why didn't you go? He said. Why didn't you go? That at my coming I might have received more. Paraphrasing here. That at my coming I might have required mine own with usury. Why didn't you go, you wicked servant? You wicked servant. I took what you gave me and I hid it in a napkin. I did nothing with it. I hid it. I didn't go because I feared man. He feared man. So he didn't go. He didn't go. And the Lord of the harvest, the Lord, the Lord of that servant, Jesus Christ being the Lord of this harvest, the Lord of that servant, the Lord of that servant, said, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou wicked servant. Jesus Christ says, He that gathereth not with me as the Lord of the harvest, he that gathereth not with me scattereth. He that gathereth not with me, Jesus Christ, is in the harvest. Are you in the harvest? Are you in the harvest today? Let's turn. Let's turn. The laborers are few, Jesus says. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he send forth laborers into his harvest. To do what? To sow. To sow what? The word. The sower soweth the word. That one may reap. That one may reap and they rejoice together. You sow the word in the harvest where there are few laborers. You sow the word and Jesus Christ reaps. God reaps. And he sends forth his angels. And they reap. Let's turn on that day. Let's turn. Job. So he says to that wicked servant, that wicked, slothful servant who did not go, out of thine own mouth will I judge thee. For everyone has to give an account of the deeds done in the body and of the words, every idle word that is spoken. Job, Job 15, verse 2. Job 15, 2. Job chapter 15, verse 2. Should a wise man utter vain knowledge and fill his belly with the east wind? Should he reason with unprofitable talk? Or with speeches wherewith he can do no good? Yea, thou casteth off fear, and restrainest prayer before God. For thy mouth uttereth thine iniquity, and thy choosest the tongue of the crafty. Thine own mouth condemneth thee, not I, yea, thine own lips testify against thee. Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. This couple verses here in Job is when Elihus, Eliphaz, excuse me, is rebuking Job. It says, Should a wise man utter vain knowledge and fill his belly with the east wind? Should he reason with unprofitable talk? Or with speeches wherewith he can do no good? He casts off fear and strain of prayer before God. He doesn't serve God. He doesn't serve God with his mouth. He restraineth prayer. He speaks vanity, speeches that mean nothing, the wisdom of the world. No, but not the sowing of the word. Not the sowing of the word that Jesus Christ requires. He that gathereth not with me scattereth, Jesus says. Jesus Christ requires, requires to go out and to sow the word. To sow the word. For be rebuked 
and judged as a wicked servant who hid his pound in the napkin because he feared man and he didn't fear God. It says he restraineth the prayer. He did not fear, Job says, or Eliphaz says to Job. His belly was filled with the east wind instead of with the Holy Ghost, rivers of living waters. He that believeth, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters, not the east wind. Talking the worldly talk, but keeping your pound in the napkin. Keeping your pound in the napkin to be judged by your own words. Your own words or lack of them. For if you fail to sow the word, what are you sowing? The east wind. That's what you're sowing. Nothing. Nothing. If you fail to sow the word. You live your life failing to sow the word and you'll be judged for every idle word that comes from your mouth. That east wind. That nothingness that you didn't sow and there was no rejoicing with your Lord. There was no rejoicing. One soweth and the other reapeth and they both rejoice, Jesus says. It's a walk with Jesus. It's a walk with Jesus. And many people don't want it to be. Many people just want to sit and hear, but don't want to speak. Let's turn. Let's turn. And they definitely don't want to go into the harvest, which is under that sun under that sky, out in the open, in the highways and in the hedges. The harvest has always been and always will be out in the streets, out in the world. Out in the world. So you can see your fellow man face to face. So you can touch him. So you can help him. So you can look him in the eye and see and feel his pain. So you can weep with him. So you can rejoice with Him. So you can fellowship with Him. So you can sow the Word to Him and be a benefit. And be a benefit for Jesus Christ was a benefit. And that's what Jesus Christ did. And He made disciples to do what He did. Let's turn. Let's turn. Are you doing what Jesus did? Are you sowing with Jesus that He can reap and you both can rejoice together? Are you out in the harvest? Or are you high hiding your pound in a napkin? And he will say to you, Thou wicked servant, out of your own mouth will I judge thee. You feared man. I feared thee, because thou art an austere man. He feared man. Let's turn. Matthew 12, 37. Matthew chapter 12, verse 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. But I say unto you, verse 36, let's go to verse 35. A good man, Matthew 12, 35. A good man, Matthew chapter 12, verse 35. Waiting for my wife to get there, Matthew 12, 35. A good man, Jesus says, out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. Are you bringing forth good things today? Or are you sowing the east wind from your belly? A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. That east wind from the belly. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. I didn't go, Lord, because I feared. I feared men. I was preaching the other day in Chinatown, and after I had finished preaching for about 30 minutes, my wife and I decided to walk back up the street, and as we were walking up the street, I saw a group of young men, youths, sitting there, standing there, with marijuana and money, and they were counting money and getting ready to smoke or smoking marijuana, whatever they were doing, they were rolling up joints openly on the street. And there was about five, six, seven of them all in a big group. And of course, you know, these type of youths are the most dangerous youths out there. The youths of Washington, D.C. 
these young men, 17, 18, 19, 20 years old, I don't know how old they were, but they looked to be about that age. And they had a hard face. They had hard faces. And so as we walked to these young men, my wife was walking, and I was walking with my wife towards them. And my wife handed them a tract and tried to give them a gospel tract. And I prayed on the way up there as they were not even really moving out of our way as we were walking towards them. They had taken up the whole sidewalk. And so as I was walking up there, I was praying. And, you know, and when you're walking up to these group type of men, uh, you always have hope that, you know, that these type of men are the men who need Jesus the most. Hard faces out there doing their thing on the street. And as I walked up to them, I stopped in the midst of them and looked at all of them and said, how are all your souls? How, how is everybody's soul here today? Anybody want to follow Jesus here today? Something like that. I don't remember exactly what I said, but it was something to that effect. Does anybody here want to follow Jesus today? And all of them looked around and kind of just walked away from me, except one, one young man, Antonio. And he said, can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? And that's what it's all about. Zacchaeus, come down, Jesus said. Zacchaeus, come down. For today I must dine at thy house. Nathaniel, behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile, Jesus says. It's about that one lost soul. Can you pray for me, Antonio says, as all his friends walked away. Walked away. Can you pray for me? And that's what it means to get out there in the harvest. To get out there amongst your fellow man. Amongst your man to not fear man. For the natural man would have you fear that type of group of people. And try to walk by them and not say anything. And not look them in the eye. But because Jesus Christ is with us. And because we have the ministry. Counting us faithful. Putting us into the ministry. We approach these men and face the fear. We face them face to face. And we ask them. Is anyone here want to follow Jesus? Does anyone here want to follow Jesus today? And one of them, I think one of them said, yeah, yeah, I do follow Jesus every day. I said, well, let's go and preach then, I said. So, you know, of course he couldn't go and preach with me because he had a, still had an unrepentant heart and he was a hypocrite. But he was wise enough to say, pray for me. Can you pray for me at least? For well, we know God here is not the prayer of sinner, and that every prayer of a sinner who is unrepentant is an abomination to God. So wisely, as Simon the sorcerer, when he tried to buy the gift of the Holy Ghost from Peter, and Peter said, Thy money perish with thee, for thy heart is not right with God. And I perceive that, the, that you are in the bond of iniquity and the gall of bitterness, and Simon said to Peter wisely, pray for me, he said, that these things not come upon me. For Simon at that moment knew that if his prayer, his prayer would not be heard. For he was in the bond of iniquity and the gall of bitterness. Therefore he asked Peter to pray for him. And that's how it was the other day with Antonio. Pray for me, he said. And that's why you go into the harvest, for that one lost soul that one lost soul you sow the word and one day Jesus reaps and you both rejoice together let's turn to Matthew 12 of 13 verse 3 and he spake many things unto them in parables saying behold a sower went forth to sow and when he sowed some seeds fell by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured them up some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Behold, a sower went forth to sow. 
A sower went forth to sow, and many people won't go forth to sow because they think that it's not going to work. It's not going to be any benefit. They're not going to be a success. The ground is too hard. No, the sower sows into that ground. And Jesus explains in the parable that not every seed is going to spring up. No. There's going to be some that are scorched, some that are on stony ground, some falling among thorns. That's not the point. The sower soweth the word, and another reaps. Another reaps, and they both rejoice together. They both rejoice together. The sower soweth the word. Let's turn. And it's all about sowing the word. There's another parable. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man, verse 24, Matthew 13, 24, which sowed good seed into his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the weak and went wheat and went his way. So the servant, but when the blade sprung up and brought forth fruit, there appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou now sow good seed in thy field? From whence then has it tares? And he said, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto them, Wilt thou that and then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Gather the wheat into my barn. The reapers will reap, but it's the sower's job. It's your job to sow. It's your job to sow and to not hide your pound in the napkin. For out of your own mouth will the Lord judge those wicked and slothful servants. Let's turn. James Chapter 2, what good is it, James, chapter 2, to hide your pound in a napkin? What good is it, James, chapter 2, verse 20? James, chapter 2, verse 20. What good is it to hide your pound in a napkin? James 2, 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? Hiding your pound in a napkin is a dead faith. He that gathereth not with me scattereth, one soweth, another reapeth. Those who sow with their belly the east wind, speaking nothing in this life, nothing but worldly wisdom, and keeping that pound in their napkin because they fear men, or because they fear that the seed that they sow will not bring forth fruit, that the ground out there in their own town is too hard, wherever they may be. If you think the ground in your town is too hard, then maybe you need to preach in another city. Maybe the Lord needs to take you to another city, another village, wherever the case may be. But one thing that the Lord would never do is allow you to sit around with your pound in a napkin. It's not going to happen. A dead faith. Wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Abraham had faith. But then he offered his son Isaac on the altar. And his works wrought with his faith. And his works and faith worked together. And his faith was perfect. His faith was perfect. Not a dead faith being alone. But a perfect faith. That wrought with his works. Let's turn. Let's turn. 1 John. 1 John. 1 John. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. 1 John 4, 17. 1 John 4, 17. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as He is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth, is not made perfect in love. Herein is our love made perfect, verse 17, 
1 John 4, 17, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment when the Lord returns the austere man and requires the pound. That we may have boldness in that day of judgment at the coming of the Lord. That as He is, so are we in this world. Jesus Christ is out in the field, in the harvest, and if we are in the field, in the harvest, as He is, so are we in this world, then we can have boldness in the day of judgment because we have that perfect love, that perfect love for Antonio that doesn't allow us to just walk on by when they see those young men out, when we see those young men out there doing whatever they're doing. Not fearing man, keeping our pound in the napkin, because I feared you. You are an austere man. He feared the man. No, perfect love casts out fear. And it's not casting out the fear of God. It's casting out the fear of man. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, verse 28. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 28, Hebrews 12, 28, Wherefore we receiving a kingdom which, which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. That perfect love that casts out fear is casting out the fear of man, that we may be as he is in this world, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, at the coming of the Lord, that our pound not be laid in the napkin because we fear the austere man, but that we fear God, that we fear God and His judgment, that we fear God and His judgment as Abraham feared God when he offered Isaac on the altar and he put the blade to the throat and God said, Stop, now I know that you fear me. And Abraham became a friend of God, that we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For perfect love casteth out fear, the fear of man, that we keep the pound in the napkin, and we don't go forth and sow the word, because we fear man. No, Jesus says, Jesus says, Luke, Luke chapter 12 I'm sorry, Revelation 15, verse 4. Revelation 15, 4. Revelation chapter 15, verse 4. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. Perfect love casts out fear, the fear of man, which is a snare, but who shall not fear the Lord? Who shall not fear thee? Jesus says, Luke chapter, Luke chapter 12. Let me find it here. Luke chapter 12. Luke 12. Luke 12, Jesus says, verse 4, verse 3. Luke 12, 3, Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear and closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that they have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him, which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Fear him who after he hath killed hath power to cast body and soul into hell. Who hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God? But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not therefore, ye are of many va more value than many sparrows. He just said to fear God, and then he said to fear not. Fear not man. 
Fear not man, you are of more value than many sparrows. Therefore, proclaim it, go and sow the word, that you don't fear them that can kill the body, but that you fear him that hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I tell you, fear him, serving God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, who shall not fear thee, O Lord. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord? The very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Also I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. Let's turn. Luke 12. Luke 12. We just read Luke 12. Let's, let's turn. Luke 19. Luke 19. Excuse me, Luke 21, verse 19, verse 17, excuse me. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but there shall not an hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. In your patience possess ye your souls. The sower soweth the word, and some lands on thorny ground, some lands on stony ground, some falls by the wayside. But sowing with patience, sowing with patience, that another may reap in your patience, ye possess your souls, not giving up. Not giving up. Let's turn. Let's turn. James 5. James chapter 5. Verse 10, James 5, 10, James chapter 5, verse 10, Take my brethren the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering and affliction and of patience. And of patience. Take my brethren the prophets for an example who have spoken the word of the Lord. Take my brethren the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. The prophets went and spoke in the name of the Lord, so the word. Take them for an example, James says. They suffered affliction, but they took it with patience. In your patience possess ye your souls, Jesus says, when you go out and speak in the name of the Lord, taking the example of the prophets. Let's turn. Let's turn. Luke 6, verse 36. Luke chapter 6, verse 36. Luke 6, 36. Luke chapter 6, verse 36. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Are you merciful today? If you're keeping your pound in a napkin, you are not merciful. If you sit back and you hear the word, but you don't do the word, you are unmerciful, a wicked servant. For you know the truth, that there is a punishment for sin, but there is a way out, which is Jesus Christ. The gospel, the gospel being merciful points to Jesus Christ. It tells others about Jesus Christ who is mercy. Jesus Christ offers mercy. He offers mercy. How are you merciful if you don't go and tell it? How are you being merciful to these poor sinners if you don't go and offer them the mercy of Jesus Christ that whosoever covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall obtain mercy. Forsaking your sins to obtain mercy, preaching the gospel, which is Romans 3, Romans chapter 3, verse 25, the gospel, Romans 3, 25, which is Jesus Christ, the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God, for the remission of sins that are past, 
those sins that you forsake, those sins that you confess and forsake and obtain mercy and receive remission for those sins that are past and now born again, walking in newness of life, rejoicing that Jesus Christ reaped that good seed that fell in good ground, not laid up in a napkin, you wicked and slothful servant. I pray that you're not. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Let's sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord.